This is a Kentucky coffee tree, and Kentucky coffee trees are a short-lived native deciduous tree that can live to be about 50 to 75 years old and grows to be about 18 to 30 meters tall. Now, these trees are commonly planted as ornamental trees, but they were once cultivated by the indigenous people of North America for their medicinal uses. They were used to treat fever and insanity. Now, these trees can be found in dry areas such as open fields or in upland forests, but they're more commonly found in wet areas such as bottomland forests or along ravines. The bark is gray and it sometimes has a reddish or pinkish tint to it, but the inner bark is going to be an orangish red color and it consists of these large scaly plates. Now the twigs are brown to gray, but they might be slightly red in color. They're typically glabrous, but they might be slightly pubescent and there are orange lenticels that dot the twig. The buds are dark greenish brown, lightly pubescent, small, and they're almost entirely hidden directly above the leaf scars, which are large bean-shaped and contain three to five bundle scars. There are actually no apical buds on this twig, but there are only lateral buds and a false terminal bud at the tip. The pith is quite distinctive though, being continuous, reddish pink, and circular. Now, the leaves of a Kentucky coffee tree are pretty distinct, being bipinnately compound, although the leaflets at the base of the leaf may be pinnate, and there are around 40 to 100 leaflets per leaf, and that makes for a pretty big leaf. Now, the leaflets themselves are egg-shaped, they taper to a point, and they have an entire margin. These trees are polygamiodioecious, which means that they are typically either male or female. However, on the occasion, these trees can be both, so they'll have both male and female reproductive organs on the same tree. Now, the flowers can be both perfect or imperfect on the occasion, so that means that the flower will either sometimes be just male or just female, or the flower will have both male and female reproductive organs in the same flower. Also, these flowers are white to green and they will bloom May to June in a spike-like inflorescence where they are pollinated by insects. After pollination takes place, large, thick, curved, dark brown woody legumes form. These legumes mature September to October with each one containing around four to seven dark brown seeds or beans that are surrounded by a sticky pulp. These poisonous seeds were once used to hunt by dumping large amounts of the seeds into bodies of water, which would stun the fish. This type of fishing isn't allowed in many areas for obvious reasons, so don't go around doing it. Also, early settlers would use these beans as a coffee substitute, although there are toxins within the seeds that can cause vomiting and diarrhea, so the seeds need to be roasted before they are used. A lot of times you'll find these legumes dangling from the branches of female trees, so it is really easy to identify them. It's believed that these legumes were once eaten by now extinct megafauna, which helped to disperse the seeds. But without any dispersers, Kentucky coffee tree populations have declined. All right, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about how to identify the Kentucky coffee tree with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.